In this video, I'm going to introduce the Unreal Engine 5, which as of recording this video just was recently released and has started to be talked about. The first thing you're going to need to do is actually download the Unreal Engine 5 into your Epic Game Launcher. But once you do that, it's very similar, however they have facelifted the overall UI. One thing to point out to you before we actually dive in and I show you some of the new UI elements and where to find things is most of your projects, if you were using 4.27, they will work in Unreal Engine 5. However, the Unreal Engine will ask if you want to upgrade to a 5.0 file. Once you do that, it's difficult to go backwards. The only other risk you may run into whenever you're working with the Unreal 5 game engine is that some of your assets may no longer be supported. So if you upgrade a project, you run the risk of the assets that you imported from say the marketplace or that you made on your own, they may not work. So I would definitely encourage you make a backup of your project, have the original 4.27, but then have like a 5.0 test version as well. So when you click on the launcher and you open up your project browser, you can see that they've facelifted the whole UI a little bit here. First off, you have the navigation going along the left-hand side now with some graphics to actually denote what you're selecting. So for instance here, if I come over to games, this should still look very, very similar here, where you have the different game types available to you as far as your prototypes. So I can choose third person and notice once again, over on the right hand side, it gives you a little bit of a background here. Now also too, another thing to point out is the defaults they've facelifted as well. You can choose between Blueprint or C++. You can also set as far as mobile or desktop, and then your quality presets as far as what you want for the game to be able to do as far as different types of layouts and also the quality of the graphics. However, once again, all the way at the bottom, you still have that project location. So again, you see in most of my videos, I use the D drive and I have an Unreal Projects folder. And then you can change your project name. So maybe I'll call this Unreal 5 Intro and go ahead and create the project. All right, so while this is building a little bit, you're now in the brand new interface for Unreal Engine 5. A Couple of things to point out is what they tried to do is they tried to give more screen space for the overall level preview window versus having a bunch of UI elements open taking down the space here. First thing is across the top here, you still have that main menu bar that you can come through here and work with all of your different elements here. Likewise, you also now have a tools where you can come in as far as your debugging and working with your C++ classes. You also now have the build up at the top in the menu bar as well. So here you still have the same choices that you can actually build out, but it's now contained on your main menu bar. Across the top here, you still have a save, but instead, like in 4.27, where we had our creating and content elements going across the left-hand side here, you now have a create drop-down menu that takes you through, and you can still access all the same items again, but you're just going across the menu at the top here. Likewise as well, you have your content browsers. You can also access your blueprints. And then lastly, you have your sequence options. Still kind of similar, but they very much thinned out the top menu bar here. Now in the center here, you have your play option here with a little drop down of three dots here that you can choose where you want to play. And then also too, you can actually go in and package and cook content specifically for different platforms if you want to do testing there. Likewise, uh, across the top here, you also have your landscaping, foliage, painting, fracture, and brush editing modes, which were hidden before. Also up on the top here, 
you still have that drop down menu for the window for the preview as far as your real time, your FPS, uh, your view planes, etc., your lit, and what you want to show in the map. Over on the right hand side, they've really thinned this out, but you can still extend it back where you can actually still see your world outliner and your details. So if I were to click on something in the game environment, there you can see all of my specific items here. They changed some of the little icons, which will take some getting used to, but they're still the same exact items. You also have your settings up at the top here as far as previewing any other items as far as the project settings or your plugins that you need to navigate to. And then the last thing that I wanted to draw your attention to is down at the bottom. If you remember, we always had the content browser kind of open and taking up space down at the bottom. What Unreal 5 has now tried to do is it's now an expandable what they call a drawer. So I can leave the drawer open, but notice it'll automatically close out for me. But what this does is this frees you up to have a little bit more space that if you are previewing or working in your game, but this is where you access that content folder. Now, if you don't want to have, you know, for instance, how it keeps closing on me there, you do have options and settings all the way at the right hand side here. So like if I say dock and layout, I'm now getting that same kind of interface here again that I had previously in 4.27 where the content browser stays open for me. Outside of that, that's kind of the main UI elements here. Up on file, here's where you can save and make your new levels or make new projects. And overall, I have to say, I really like the changes that they made to the UI. It will take some getting used to. You may have to fumble around a little bit just to find the elements that you're used to. They may not be in the same exact spots. But again, this is kind of the wave of the future. So once you get comfortable with it, it'll be like, you know, getting back on a bicycle. So hopefully this helped as far as at least showing you where to find your elements. And that's the brief introduction to what's changed in UE5 as far as the interface is concerned.